This is the all-new Evoke from Range Rover, a compact crossover that's turning heads because it looks so cool. You might be wondering, why is Range Rover getting into the compact crossover market? They're the builders of big off-road trucks that are heavy and ultra-luxurious and very expensive. Well, the main reason is that they need to offset just how much fuel those big gas-guzzling SUVs use. With the new corporate average fuel economy standards, they've got to bring the amount of fuel as an average that they use across the board. And by bringing this compact crossover to the market, they can reduce the amount of fuel that the company is seen to use overall. And also, it's going to allow a lot of people to get into a Range Rover that never would have been able to afford one in the past. Now, one thing I want you to think about when we go through this review is that this vehicle wasn't built just by a Range Rover. Range Rover used to be owned by Ford. So you've got Ford here, they also own Volvo, which is now being sold to Geely Motors in China. And you have Range Rover, Land Rover, and Jaguar that was sold to Tata Motors in India. But this vehicle was in the works for a while. So the basis of this crossover platform is a Volvo XC60. And inside, it's got some tweaks from Jaguar. And under the hood, it has a Ford engine. That's right, a Ford engine. So keep that in mind as we have a look around. There's some things that definitely have pulled from different parts of the family. The Range Rover Evoque is an interesting vehicle on the inside. I mentioned off the top, you had that Ford umbrella in the past. You had Jag and Range Rover on this side, and you had Volvo on the other side. They've since been sold off, but this vehicle was planned well before they divorced, and you can see some of the influences inside the Evoque. The center panel here, the console, has a floating design. It's hollow in the back, almost exactly the same as the XC60. Even the finish in the center looks very Volvo-like. The seats are heavily bolstered, and they have long seat bottoms, which reminds me a lot of Jag seats. Now, speaking of Jag, the shifter in the center here, when you turn the car on, it pops up. You can rotate it back and forth. It takes a little while to get used to, but after a while, it becomes very comfortable. And then when you switch the car off, it disappears again. That's directly out of a Jag product. And the inside materials remind me more of Volvo materials than you would expect from your traditional Range Rover. Now, this vehicle is comfortable in the front. It's very roomy. It's got this beautiful, massive panoramic uh, moonroof here. It can come with a fixed panel or the optional full glass panel we have in the top model. The back seat really is quite roomy once you're in. Now that's why I think this two-door version is really only for people who are single or a couple. If you're a family, you're probably going to need to get that four-door model. But if you need a compact crossover and you want something that nobody else has, this Evoque has it in space. Well, first of all, Range Rover did not make their own engine. They didn't use a Jag engine. They're using a Ford engine. Remember off the beginning, I mentioned that Ford used to own Range Rover? Well, this vehicle has the EcoBoost four-cylinder. That's right, a four-cylinder engine in this vehicle with 240 horsepower from a two-liter direct injection turbocharged engine. Now, this is going to be very exciting for anybody that's interested in a Ford in the next little while. And in this Evoque, it does a fantastic job. You can drive it in regular drive. You can put it in sport mode, and you even have the paddle shifters here if you like. Now, I've picked a particularly twisty and somewhat bumpy road along the mountains here, and this little vehicle just dances in the corners because it's built on a crossover platform. Gone is all that truck heaviness that you get from a typical Range Rover, and now you get a car-based platform, the same one that's used for the Volvo XC60 and for the Land Rover LR2. It just dances in the corners. It's got great performance from this engine, and anybody that's looking for a Range Rover that wants some fun, this one delivers.
At the end of any review, you have to ask yourself, did Range Rover hit the target that they were going for? Well, I would say absolutely. They made a lighter vehicle, a much more efficient vehicle, a more dynamic vehicle to drive. It has beautiful handling. That, that turbocharged four-cylinder is fabulous, and it definitely has the style that's going to get people into showrooms. And the price starts around $47,000 and goes all the way up to about $62,000. You can get the two-door or the four-door. I predict that there's going to be a lot of people looking at this vehicle instead of, say, a BMW X3 or a GLK from Mercedes. You know why? It just looks so cool.